Hey everybody, super excited to have you all here. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about um, at least my vantage point into the roadmap, looking at some of the core protocol improvements, ecosystem improvements that are happening across Filecoin. Um, if you want to follow along with these slides, please take a picture of that QR code um, and then this will give you all of the links. I'm gonna also share a number of roadmaps that different teams are publishing on Notion, on GitHub, other places. And so if you wanna open my slides, blaze through it to the end, you'll find your index into everything that's happening in this ecosystem. So hopefully that, uh, that gives everyone some, uh, some fun things to follow along with. You can then ignore me and just entirely play with those slides. Um, warning, it's long. I have 15 minutes to get through all this and so we're gonna go quickly. All right, so jumping into things, give you a tiny peek into the past year of Filecoin growth. It's been amazing, really seeing what this ecosystem is doing then really dive into a set of core improvements that have been happening over the past couple of months and that are coming through Q3 and Q4 of this year. And then finally, your index into all things roadmaps, where to stay updated with the work that core development teams are doing across the ecosystem. So I'm pretty sure most folks here know Filecoin if you showed up to this event, um, but it's a crypto-powered storage network working to make all of humanity's information resilient um, and accessible to everyone. Over the past year of, uh, of Filecoin's life, we actually have built one of the largest data storage networks on the planet. It's also the cheapest large-scale storage network. You could, most people showing up to Filecoin can store their data for free, including large-scale data. Um, we're also one of the fastest upgrading blockchains. We 10 x the capacity of the network within the first eight months of Filecoin's life. Um, and over the, the past year, we've been making it dramatically easier to store data on Filecoin. Um, and take advantage of all of, all of these improvements. Um, a couple of stats about things that have been improving over the past year in Filecoin's life. The storage provider community has doubled in the past year. We've 4X'd the storage capacity of the Filecoin network, over 16 exabytes. This is, I think, 10% of the size of, um, of AWS at this point, which means you know one, one more 10X and we're there competing neck and neck. It's pretty freaking cool. Uh, the active data on Filecoin has just exploded this year. Really since uh, January 2022, we've seen a massive amount of new Filecoin Plus data coming onto the network. Um, this really is a, an indicator that clients are starting to make significant use of Filecoin as a place to store their data. Um, speaking of which, this is a massive increase since Q1 of, of 2021, a 564% year over year increase to be exact. Um, and so this is a, a really great um, improvement rate for us, shows that we've been making a lot of gains and improvements in how accessible and easy it is to store data in Filecoin as a network. Um, this is also really thanks to the Filecoin Plus program, which helps many of these clients get onboarded onto the network. Um, there's been a massive increase in data notaries who are granting Filecoin Plus data cap. Um, I think 700x growth in Phil Plus data onboarding rate. Um, and so this program has really taken off and, and helped bring Filecoin to many communities. Um, we're now onboarding, I think for the whole last week, we've been onboarding at least a petabyte of Filecoin per day of data onto the network. Pretty freaking cool. Um, that, that growth rate is still just the beginning. We want to 5x that number as well. So we're onboarding five petabytes of data per day. Start running into bandwidth issues uh, at that point, but uh, excited to make that happen. Um, and there's also been massive work over the past couple of months on things like NFT storage and Web3 storage, which are um, popular dev tools that many folks use to really like smooth the, the developer onboarding process of getting their data stored on things like IPFS and Filecoin. So now we're at this place where hundreds of amazing data sets across groups like OpenSea, the New York Open Data uh, Collective, Flickr, um, USC Shoah Foundation, and many others are now storing their data on Filecoin to make it resilient and, and accessible. Okay, so main meat of this talk, most of the slides, upcoming Filecoin improvements. Um, this is my uh, three highlight themes of, of areas of improvement that Filecoin's really been pushing on. There's a major theme that's been happening you know, since the beginning of the network, but especially also in the past couple of quarters around capacity and data onboarding, making it easier to add more capacity to the network, easier to onboard data to that capacity. Um, there's a new thread that kind of kicked off last summer, which is really picking up steam, which we're super excited about, which is adding programmability and computation to the Filecoin network so you can run compute over the state, you can have user-generated smart contracts on Filecoin, and you can start interacting with data stored in the Filecoin network through those smart contracts. 
super exciting about that. Um, and then finally, a, an increased push on things like data retrievability, making sure that data is accessible to run all sorts of amazing dApps um, over top of data stored. So um, here's our high level roadmap um, of these three themes, um, programmability and computation at the top, um, data retrievability in the middle, capacity and data onboarding, as you can see, is the biggest category with tons of, tons of improvements there. We'll try and get through as many of these as we can. So starting from the beginning, um, you know, Jan January slash December uh, of this year, uh, the Slingshot Recovery Initiative. So this is a new program that was put in place at the beginning of this year to make sure that when data expires off the network or is lost by you know, one of its replicators in the network, that we can repair and resiliently make additional copies of that data across many other places. This is running actively on the network today, making sure that if at any point one SP loses a replica of data, that uh, across the world other SPs pick up and replicate that data by retrieving data from the um, other SPs that already exist in the network. From Slingshot Recovery, we talk about FBM M0. This launched in, I think, you know, mid-January. Um, the, the M0 release open sourced the FBM code base, um, announced the early builders program, which we'll talk about in a second, um, and also started making it so that anyone could, could start testing and using um, you know, DevNets to deploy a user actor. Um, next was the, the ESPA program which is an accelerator for new storage providers to kind of learn from people who have been around for a while in the network, get onboarded and ramped up. There's an amazing set of YouTube videos if anyone wants to, to dive deeper into this. The Snap Deals upgrade, this was coming for a long time. This is something that, that kind of the, the community started working on in I think August of uh, 2021. Um, and there was the, the O-SNAP network upgrade, which brought the ability to store data into existing sectors really efficiently. So I think it's like a 20 minute upgrade and you can uh, XOR in data to an existing sector that you've already sealed. This also makes it possible for like um, potential new storage providers to come into the network who don't have all of the sealing hardware um, and capacity who just want to be storing data into existing sectors. Um, and there's been a number of UX improvements to that since as well. Um, the Slingshot Evergreen program, this is kind of a, a, an evolution of, of repair and restore, um, which is trying to, as, as new, um, as data is stored in the Filecoin network, it also wants to make sure that it's auto repairing all of this useful data and making sure that, you know, what, uh, when the Slingshot program started, uh, a number of folks who were participating um, stored the data for like a year and a half. Great, we got to a year and a half. Let's make sure that we store it for another year and a half. Let's make sure we start for another five years um, and make sure that data continues to, to exist and be accessible. I think um, now we have over 232 terabytes stored through Evergreen. Um, program kicked off a couple of months ago, so doing pretty well so far. Fillmine is a really exciting new program. If you haven't met Vuk yet, definitely go talk to him. Um, it's really helping kind of be the, the profile for storage providers so they can describe um, their, their kind of setup. They can uh, manage their machines and clusters through this. They also have a lot of really useful tools for calculating revenue and things like that. So really useful tools for storage providers. The FVM Early Builders Program. This is where we brought many folks across the community to start building the tooling and the smart contracts that folks are excited to, to unlock with FVM. Um, there's some amazing things being built. There's a regular community call of folks demoing and sharing the, the work that they're doing. This is our very long list of teams that are participating. So super, super excited for um, all of these groups to help make FVM actually useful and accessible to many people here. On the data retrie retrievability side, um, back in kind of the, the end of Q1, beginning of Q2, the network indexer launched. Um, this is taking all of the, the data that's stored in Filecoin sectors and creating indexes of all of the content IDs or CIDs that are stored there, which means that you can then make retrieval requests from IPFS or any other uh, application that's trying to access specific data that's stored by a storage provider, can look up which storage provider, which deal this is stored in, um, and route to the right content. And this is also really useful if you're a large data provider in the IPFS network and you want to be more efficiently participating in the, the kind of content routing process of IPFS, this is a, a scalable solution for that as well. Um, back on, on the kind of core uh, data and onboarding improvements. Boost is an amazing new um, kind of markets node that many folks can use for um, onboarding and, and scaling the capacity and data they're onboarding. It has a, like a nice GUI for tracking all of the, the deals that you're accepting and um, monitoring things like your, um, 
your bandwidth and any errors that happen. Um, also allows things like um, uh, doing kind of like a hybrid online offline deal that uses HTTP transfers to um, bring data to that boost node. And so um, it is going to GA, I believe, next week. So anyone can, can go jump in and start running that if you're a storage provider or a client. Um, Lotus 115.2 was actually a really exciting feature release. Lotus puts out a new feature release every month. Um, this brought kind of a couple of exciting new features, a lot focused on storage providers and their quality of life and, and onboarding experience. Um, one was these window post workers that helped scale um, the ceiling rate. Um, and another was improvements to the, the task scheduler so that we could make use of that more effectively. Um, if you haven't yet seen the awesome new website, uh, Big Data Exchange, um, it's a new storage auction platform. You can talk to ZX, I'm sure he's around here somewhere, um, who is part of kind of making this happen. But now clients who have large publicly good data sets um, that are maybe very, very attractive to storage providers can auction the, the right to store this data, maybe make it useful for computation revenues in the future. Um, but this is a really cool new platform where clients can list um, and storage providers can bid <coughs> for storing that data, which is pretty cool. So you can get paid to store data on Filecoin now. Pretty awesome. Um, FBM M1, we are now transitioning from what has happened over the past you know, five months so far and now looking into what is going to happen in the next coming months. FBM M1 is going out right at the end of Q2, maybe end of June, very, very beginning of July. Um, this is laying the foundation for building that, those user programmable smart contracts. So we're switching over to a Wasm IPLD runtime for Filecoin. We're switching to the Rust built-in actors. It is uh, not yet unlocking user programmability, but it's laying the foundations for that future, future upgrade. Um, definitely, if you don't already follow the Lotus Twitter account, this is tweeting all of the latest updates on uh, timeline updates and, um, and when this is gonna be landing in the live network. Um, I think we're expecting uh, just a couple weeks from now. So very, very exciting. A lot of testing has gone in to make sure this is super secure. Um, another thing that's upcoming that's super exciting is the work that Saturn and other groups are doing with retrieval markets. Um, this is a super exciting opportunity for many new participants to enter the Filecoin ecosystem of, of providing storage um, and you know, cash edge nodes that can then offer really, really fast retrievals, a decentralized CDN, um, and I think they're looking right now, they're here somewhere, looking for folks who can participate as L1 nodes, who are kind of slightly beefier nodes and are gonna serve many of those retrieval requests. So retrieval markets in Filecoin coming soon. Um, another really exciting area that we've talked about for a while, but right now the foundations are getting laid for this to actually um, happen live in the network, are things like data preservation DAOs, where a community can come together to preserve data that they care about, kind of like what the, the Slingshot program has been uh, prototyping so far, um, but kind of co can collectively incentivize and, and fund the storage and long-term preservation of, of important public good data. Um, and so there's, there's new tools and, um, and models in the works to make this actually happen. Um, the Filecoin uh, network version 17, which will be the next network upgrade probably um, after FEM M1, uh, has a number of really exciting Filecoin improvement proposals in the works that can land here. Um, these are things to bring programmability into the storage market and, and refactor a number of the actors in Filecoin so that when we launch smart contracts on top of this, you can have really nice APIs to do the things that you want, um, configuring the built-in Filecoin actors to like, you know, have self-replicating deals or um, to build even whole new markets nodes on top of this. Um, and so there's a, a set of core Filecoin improvement proposals. Go and check out the FIPS discussion section if if you want to learn more, um, that we're hoping to get in an intermediate upgrade between FBM M1 and FBM M2 that brings full user programmability. Speaking of which, um, really this is the, the exciting milestone that we are all gunning for. We're trying to do it as fast as possible, but we also know that we need to do it very securely and we need to bring the whole kind of community and ecosystem along as we bring smart contracts and user programmability into Filecoin, allowing you to do kind of like a computation and interaction um, with the state of Filecoin. Um, we're also prioritizing EVM compatibility so you can bring over um, smart contracts and augment them from EVM using kind of all of the existing tools you know for, for building and, and auditing smart contracts. Um, 
from here, this unlocks so many cool things. The CryptoNet team is already focused on this and has like a number of prototypes they've already launched to take advantage of this programmability. One of them is the data retrievability oracle. Um, there's a great talk from the last Crypto Econ Day that Nicola gave about this retrievability oracle where you put up some collateral and if you don't make your data retrievable as promised, it will slash the, the party who is, is not actually storing it. There's actually a prototype live on Ethereum testnet. So go take a look at this. We may think about ways we can use this within the Slingshot program to make sure that folks who are trying to store public access data also make it retrievable for everyone to build applications on top of so we can have you know, genomics data viewers and open street map viewers and other things built on the data that's already been stored in Filecoin. I would go forward, but I can't. Well, this, this is a great slide. You can definitely uh, appreciate it. There we go. Okay, we're gonna go through this really quickly now. Um, of course, one of the things that people get really excited about when you're like, wait, we can actually write programs in Filecoin. What about the data that's stored within Filecoin? Let's write programs over that. So there's a number of groups, Bacalao, Lurk, a number of others that are working on um, kind of machine learning algorithms over data stored in Filecoin that can restore the output of that machine learning back into Filecoin. Um, super, super excited for this. Um, if you're excited about this, we're also building kind of like more of a working group where many parties that are working on this sort of thing can get together, share their progress, demo their updates, um, and everyone can follow along. Um, I think we're almost at the end. Two more exciting things to mention. One is the hierarchical consensus protocol that the Consensus Lab team's been working on. This creates all of that chain space we're going to need for compute over data and compute over state and um, all of the other kind of increases from a storage perspective that are happening. Um, this is a super, super exciting project. Definitely go check it out. I'm gonna give you their roadmap in a second. Um, but this allows you to create child chains and we can then scale the chain space within Filecoin into many, many child chains that commit their state back up to the parent. Um, and last but not least, this one's actually coming in 2023, so early, early preview. Um, but there's some really exciting work happening around scalable threshold encryption, um, which can help with things like data access and kind of um, limiting who has access to a set of data. Um, Still early days, but definitely keep an eye out on this. I think there's a demo work in progress right now that we'll share out more on soon. But anyways, this is your uh, whirlwind tour through a set of the things that are coming. I know this is not complete. There's many other things that this ecosystem is doing, but hopefully you can see that there's a lot of exciting progress happening. And many of these ideas started actually six months ago and have been building and iterating and working on these since then, such that we can be launching them in Q3 and Q4 of this year. So pretty exciting momentum. If you want to stay updated, I know I'm at time, so I'm just gonna like run through these very quickly. You have the slides, you can look through all these links, but definitely check out the uh, GitHub discussions community roadmap. Um, you can check out the PL Endress roadmap, which is one of the teams that I run. Um, on PL YouTube, this has all of the, the kind of like major milestones that we're pushing towards within that. Um, Lotus updates happen in Filecoin Slack, and then there's also um, a Lotus roadmap notion, GitHub discussions, and the Lotus releases. The Bedrock Roadmap, this includes things like the Network Indexer and Boost and others. Um, you can check it out on Notion and see, see the different roadmap milestones they're pushing towards. Retrieval Markets Roadmap's also on Notion. This is where you can follow along with Saturn and the work that they're doing. The CryptoNet Roadmap, which has threshold encryption and um, that like data retrievability oracle is also on Notion. Check out the other exciting ideas that they're brainstorming right now and get involved. Consensus sharding is actually on Zen Hub, um, also beautiful. Um, and they are like the number one best people at hitting their roadmap timelines, which is very impressive in this space. Um, and so definitely follow along there for the work that's happening. FVM roadmap is up on the FVM website, fvm.falcoin.io. Check it out. We update it when we have more kind of concrete dates for folks. Um, and it's also a great way to get involved in the early builders program. Um, of course, you should all be following Filecoin News. It's posted on the Filecoin blog, and there's a link at the bottom where you can sign up for it to get in your email. For everything storage providers, check out sp.filecoin.io. And for everything community events like this one, check out events.filecoin.io or um, the, the Filecoin Foundation's events website. Um, really hope that you join us at another event like this. It's amazing to get to meet this whole community and share the progress that's happening across all these different teams. So much amazing momentum right now. Um, so I'm happy to jump into a corner, answer questions for folks, but thanks so much for taking the time. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff.